These are the samples from the painting by Raphael and each tiny flake of paint is in a separate gelatin capsule. And this one here is the one from the grey paint of the architecture. And now I'm going to um, put this sample onto a microscope slide and look at it under this low powered microscope to decide how I'm going to mount it and which orientation I'm going to use. And then place it into a mould to mount it in polyester resin. So the sample from Raphael's painting is now mounted in the resin. I'm going to take it out of the mould. Usually when I take a sample from a painting with a scalpel, um, we end up with a piece of paint which is um, a triangular shape like this. And it, um, it has lots of layers of, of paint, like this. And um, this is the surface of the paint. And this is the, the bottom layer of the paint here. And um, we then mount it in the polyester resin block, like this. And then what we want is to get a cross section through the paint layers so that we have a nice flat surface to look at under the microscope. So we want to grind through the paint sample like this. So we need to grind away this part of the resin block. Now I'm going to look at the cross section that I've made under a higher powered microscope at a magnification of about 200 times in reflected light. And now we can see the layer structure of the paint sample. And um, we can see here that there are three separate paint layers. The first one, the lowest paint layer here, is the white priming layer placed on the panel before Raphael started painting. And the uppermost layer is the grey paint of the arch. But what we can see is that the grey paint lies over green landscape paint and we can see immediately that Raphael changed his mind during the painting. We can also see the, um, the separate pigment particles within the paint layers, so we can see what mixtures Raphael used. And in the grey paint there is a mixture of a white pigment with another pigment which looks like tiny particles of metal. Um, but in order to identify that pigment we're going to need to do some more sophisticated analysis. I'm now at the scanning electron microscope which I'm going to use to analyse the pigment in the grey paint of the arch. And I've placed a, a small piece of the paint onto this sticky carbon stub. And I'm going to put that inside the vacuum chamber of the scanning electron microscope. In the chamber the sample is being bombarded with electrons which generate an image and at the same time x-rays are generated which we can analyse with an x-ray detector. This is the image created by the electrons in the scanning electron microscope and the contrast in the image is um, created by differences in the composition of the, of the pigments. So some pigment particles appear light grey such as this one and some appear a darker grey such as these up here. And this large light grey particle here is the pigment that we're interested in which appears um, as if it's small particles of metal under the light microscope. We can now place the cursor onto this metallic particle and analyse this one particle. And this produces a spectrum with peaks showing the energies of the X-rays that are generated in the scanning electron microscope. And the energy is specific to the particular element that the pigment contains. And we can see that this pigment contains bismuth and therefore identify it as bismuth metal. 
And this is in fact an extremely rare pigment which has only been found in paintings of the early 16th century. In the 16th century, when Raphael was painting, you couldn't just go out and buy a tube of paint. You would actually have to make up the paint yourself. Raphael would have bought the pigment, and then he would have bought an organic binding material with which to make his paint. He would then have got an assistant to grind the pigment and the binding medium together. Various materials were used as the binding medium. It could be oils from various seeds or nuts or perhaps a protonaceous binding material such as egg tempera. If I want to find out what Raphael was using as his binding material, I take a tiny sample, and here is one I've taken from the white arch in his painting, and I'm going to analyse it using a separation technique, gas chromatography. Normally I'd inject a small part of my sample into the injector port of the gas chromatogram, but because I want to see what's going on inside, I won't do that now. The sample is injected and passes into the gas phase through, because it's in a hot injector port. The molecules are then carried through this very long 30 meter, very fine column by a helium gas carrier. And as the components are carried through, they pass out through into a detector. The smaller, lighter molecules will tend to come out first and then the heavier, more massive molecules will come out later on. This is the chromatogram that I obtained earlier for the sample of grey paint from the arch in Raphael's painting. The chromatogram shows the quantity of substance and this is the time it's taken to come off the column. The organic components that I'm looking at here are the fatty acids and here are four fatty acids of interest from the amount of time it takes to come off the column and from the detector that I use, which actually, in effect, weighs the molecules, I can tell exactly which fatty acids these are. And from the exact fatty acids and their proportion, I can tell that this is a walnut oil that Raphael has used as the binding medium.